Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our dyes, Stitched Root Veggies and also Stitched Garden Veggies. These sets are so cute, they are great apart and they are great mixed together, so let's go ahead and check them out and create four cards with them. We're going to start off by taking a look at the Stitched Root Veggies. Here you can see we have a super cute carrot, we also have a radish, then we have the onion, which might be my favorite. And then we also have a beet, or it could also be a turnip, and then lots of little leaves that you can mix and match. It also comes with little smiley faces that you can die cut from the different veggies if you would like. And there's also some super cute rosy cheeks too. And this is what it looks like when you add the leafy tops to the veggies. And I love that you can mix and match all the little leaves. It looks really cute to do that. And so you'll see that at the top, they have a little die cut line there, which makes it really easy to tuck the leaf in. You just have to add some adhesive, tuck it right into that opening and press down. And now you've added your greenery to the top of your veggies. For the onion, we're going to layer the greenery behind the onion, just like that. And then you'll see there for the beet, we'll do the same thing that we did for the carrot and also the radish. We'll add some adhesive there to our cute little leafy piece. And then we're just going to layer that right in to that opening on the beet. And look how adorable those are. Then here you can see we've had all those little faces on to the veggies. And then now we're going to add these fun little rosy cheeks. And there's something about the rosy cheeks that makes it even cuter. I just love it so much. And I love that you can use the veggies both plain and with smiley faces. And we're going to be showing you how to use both of those in the video today. Now we're going to take a look at the stitched garden veggies. And here you can see we have a little cabbage there and then the leaves that go with it. We have some lettuce and then the leaves that layer on top. We have this super cute pepper, which is so cute, and you could die cut it out of red, yellow, green, and also an adorable tomato. This set has three little smiley faces as well, and you can mix and match the smiley faces from the different sets too. And then there you can see some rosy cheeks. And so this is what it looks like when you start to layer the pieces in the Stitched Garden Veggies set. And that over there, over the cabbage, I mean, oh my goodness, it's so cute. This little lettuce makes me smile every single time, especially when you add the little smiley face. It looks like he's peeking out from behind the leaves and it's just adorable. You'll see on the pepper, it has one of those little die cut lines like the stitched root veggies. And so we're just going to tuck the stem right into the die cut lines and it makes it look so realistic when it's tucked in between. And then for the tomato, we're going to add our little leafy top right on there and it just looks absolutely adorable. And then of course we have those little cute rosy cheeks again, which look adorable with all of these fun little smiley faces. And then here you can see that we have a nice comparison between the stitch root veggies and the stitch garden veggies. They can all be used on their own or you can mix and match them together for the cutest salad ever. And so now we're going to start creating some amazing cards and first up Shari is going to create a gorgeous card for you. So take it away Shari. So for my veggies today, I've cut all those root veggies and their toppers from white cardstock and I am going to be adding ink to all of these die cuts. For the background, I'm using the stitched wavy background landscape and I've cut that from some craft cardstock and we're going to do some inking on that as well. Since I'm using root veggies today, I want my background to look like the dirt in the garden. And so that is why I'm starting with this craft cardstock. And now I'm adding some tea dye distressing just kind of randomly around so that my brown is a little more splotchy and looks like dirt. And now I'm bringing in some vintage photo distressing to add an even darker shade of brown. And as you can see, I'm just kind of going around making it splotchy. I really don't want this to look perfect because I want it to look like the dirt that our veggies are planted in. And I'm just going back and forth between the two colors until I get this looking the way I want. I do like that the inking makes those little stitching details stand out. Now I'm taking that vintage photo distress ink and I have smushed it onto my glass mat. I'm adding a little bit of water and I'm going to pick that up and add some darker brown splatters to this to give this some texture. And once I have all these splatters looking the way I like, I will just set this aside and let that water dry. Now for all of my veggie die cuts, I will be adding ink to all of them and I'm using my grip mat in my stamp wheel platform to hold my die cuts in place. So with the carrot, of course I started with carrot ink and now I'm adding some fake tan. For each of these veggies, I'll be using a lighter shade and a darker shade. For the radish colors, I have bubblegum for my lighter shade, and then I will use guava for the darker shade. I do realize that this is the larger of these two shaped root veggies, and this is 
probably the beet and I colored them incorrectly, but on my card I have a really large radish and a very small beet, and that's okay. For the onion, I wanted that nice creamy yellowy color that we have on onions and sugar cookie was the perfect color for this. So I did sugar cookie all over. And then for the shadow, I pulled in pizza crust, which is just that really nice kind of yellowy brown. And I'm being very light handed, so it still keeps that light oniony color. For my beet, I'm using grape jelly for the lighter color of the background. And then I will pull in sugar plum for my shading. Now for all of the tops of these veggies, I wanted them all to be different colors of green. So for this one, I'm using celery stick. This is for my carrot. Next up, I have cilantro for this topper here. This will be for my beet and freshly cut grass for this one, which is for my radish. And then finally, I have a clover, and I really like this one for the onion because you get that nice, rich green color. Next up, I want to add some texture to these so that they're not quite so perfect and they look more like real veggies. So I'm using some white watercolor. So you can see I did some big droplets there, and then I will flick it off of a little acrylic block to get some small ones. And this will just add some subtle texture to my veggies. Once that watercolor is dry, I can die cut out my little faces, which I could have done previously as well. There are three little faces in the root veggie die set. So I'm cutting all my little faces out of all of my cute little veggies. Now I have some scraps of storm cloud cardstock that I've just cut into some little rectangles and these will layer behind the faces. So I'll flip over all my veggies. Then I'll add a little bit of liquid glue around the eyes and the mouth. And I'll just pop those rectangles back there and that will fill in the eyes and the mouth on the front and we have that dark gray. Once I have the faces filled in, I can add the tops to all my veggies. So I'm adding the onion first because I can just put that glue on the back side. I think he is so cute with that dark green stem coming out the top. For the others, there is a little slit in the top where you can tuck the end of that greenery. So I'm just using my finger to kind of open up that slit. I'll put a little dot of glue and then I will tuck that little greenery in the top. And now all my veggies are ready to go on my card. For the sentiment, I'm using Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring to spell out the sentiment that says sending smiles and sunshine, which I think is really fun with these smiling veggies. So you can easily line up all of these words because the bases of these stamps are rectangular. And then I always like to add my exclamation point at the end. I'm stamping it on some white cardstock and then I will use a sentiment banner to cut this out. You can see I kind of have this to where the text is towards the left side. I will run it through my die cut machine once and then I'll realign that die and cut it again to get a shorter sentiment banner. I like how you can customize the length of a banner to fit your sentiment perfectly. Next up, I have all of the speech bubbles and I wanted to add a little speech bubble for one of these veggies. I'm stamping this in some River Rock ink and then I will stamp the sentiment that says you're amazing in some black licorice ink right inside that speech bubble. And then of course, there are coordinating dies so I will use those to cut out this cute little speech bubble and then I will have all of the elements and I'm ready to assemble my card. So I'm starting with some adhesive all over this background and I will put that onto a card base. Next, I've added some foam squares all over the back of my sentiment banner and I will align this on the bottom and I can use that bottom wavy line as a guide to get it nice and straight. Then I've arranged my veggies where I want them to be and what I'm going to do with these is pop them up on some different thicknesses of foam squares. 
So for this onion and the carrot, which are in the center, I'm using some regular thickness foam squares. And then for the beet and the radish, I'm using some thin foam squares. So they're set back just slightly from the carrot and the onion. If you don't have different thicknesses, you could pop them all up with the same thickness, or you could double stack your squares depending on what you want. And then finally, I'm adding that cute little speech bubble right above the onion, which I think is the perfect finishing touch to this card. And here is my finished card with those inked up root veggies, and I just think it turned out so cute. Oh my goodness, Shari, I love this card so much, and the inking you did on the veggies is just gorgeous. And I love how Shari mixed and matched all of those stitched root veggies. And for this card, we're gonna be using mainly the carrots and kind of focusing on one of the veggies, but we're also going to be cutting something from the garden veggies. We're gonna cut the little head of lettuce too. And to add color to these veggies, we're gonna start off with colors of cardstock or pattern paper and then add a little bit of ink to them to get that really beautiful detail. So here for the carrots, we started out with some sunflower cardstock and then we're adding some, you guessed it, carrot ink to the sides of them. And you can see that by starting with the color of cardstock, it makes it really easy to just add a little bit of inking to one side of them and get that gradient look. So this is a quick and easy way to get that look. And you can see those carrots just come to life as we brush on that beautiful orange ink. Then we're going to be repeating the same thing for both the carrot tops and also the lettuce here. So we're going to add some of this jalapeno ink to the lettuce and the little lettuce leaves. And the lettuce we cut from some watercolor wishes paper and then the leaves from some cilantro cardstock. And then the tops of the carrots are also from some watercolor wishes pattern paper. So with the watercolor wishes it has that great texture to it which is going to give your leaves this beautiful look. So it's fun to mix and match both colors of cardstock and pattern papers too. We're going to layer the little leaves on to the lettuce there and it looks so, so cute. And then we're going to start tucking in the leafy tops for the carrots. And one way that I really like to do this is to take a little pokey tool and just kind of open up the opening there at the top of the carrot. We can add a little bit of adhesive onto the little leaf piece and then tuck it right inside. And that's going to give you that adorable carrot look. And so we're just going to repeat this for all of the carrots. You can add a little bit of adhesive either onto the leaves or directly onto your carrot. And that's going to hold that right in place and you can see it's just looking adorable. Now you may remember our harvest crate which went really well with stitched pumpkins and stitched gourds for fall. Well this harvest crate is really great for spring too and we're going to be adding the veggies into the crate. So we're die cutting the harvest crate out of some wood grain cardstock and then we're just going to add a little bit of inking to this too so that it really matches our carrots. And so here we've got some walnut ink and we're just dusting the edges of all of the pieces. Those are the little planks for the front of the crate and then we're also going to dust the crate as well. Then we'll add some adhesive to the back of all of the planks and we're gonna layer it on to the crate, just like that. So you'll see as you start to layer those, it really helps the whole crate come to life and it feels so three-dimensional. Now here you can see all of the cute carrots and what they look like tucked into the crate and it's just the most adorable thing. You can also do things like die cut other of the stitch fruit veggies or stitch garden veggies and they all look really, really adorable in the crate. But for now, we're gonna take all these pieces and put them aside and start to work on the main base piece of the card here. So we're gonna die cut the largest of the small stitch rectangles out of some white cardstock, and we are going to be stenciling on some clouds with the cloudy stencil. We're gonna use some merman ink, and the merman ink and the cloudy stencil are my favorite way to create skies. And so what we're gonna do is start on the stencil and then move off of it onto the paper. And you're gonna see that this is gonna create the most gorgeous little cloud line. Then once you move your stencil out of the way, you can flip it to another edge of the stencil to create a different shaped cloud. You can also do things that kind of angle the clouds and get different looks that way too. So you can see there, we just kind of angled that one down a little bit and that looks really, really beautiful. And you can just kind of keep playing around, testing different sides until you create your most beautiful, perfect sky for your scene. We're also going to be taking out some Spiffy Speckles Pesto, which is a really great green color. And we're going to die cut that with that same of the large of the small stitch rectangle size. And then we're also then going to die cut that piece with the grassy border. And this will make sure that all of the pieces have that little stitched edge, which is going to look so nice. Then to make sure that the grass goes along with all of the other inking we've done, we're gonna take some jalapeno ink and just ink the edges of it. And once again, inking that pattern paper or colored cardstock just makes it feel so special and it's so quick and easy to do. And it just looks gorgeous. I get excited every single time that I do it. 
So now we have our cute little grass piece, we have our sky, and we're gonna look for some pattern paper here to be our base. And the fruit salad paper pack has this really great orange gingham, which is perfect for our orange carrot theme. So we're gonna take the largest of the large stitch rectangle dies, that's gonna be five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're gonna die cut that piece of fruit salad pattern paper. And then we're gonna start to layer all of these together. And there's something so fresh and bright and springy about these colors, I love it so much. So we're gonna layer our grass on there, and then we're gonna start working on the rest of our scene. And we are gonna bring the stamp set Carrot About You, which has the world's cutest little carrot car and a little bunny driver. And I think it's gonna be really fun to mix and match the die cut carrots with the stamped images, especially with that adorable little carrot car. So we're gonna add some adhesive to the back of the carrot car so that we can layer our sweet little bunny inside. And every time, I'm smiling because he's just driving the carrot car. It's just the cutest thing ever. And then we're gonna go ahead and start layering in our carrots. So we're gonna add some adhesive to the back of the crate there so that it can hold everything in place. And then we're gonna start tucking in the carrots and you'll see just how cute this is looking. It is just absolutely adorable. So we're gonna take two carrots there to the side and then have one right there in the middle. And I just think this is looking looking so, so sweet. And you can see, you can play around with how the carrots are in front of each other or behind each other, have ones peeking out more than the other. It's gonna look so cute and sweet. So now we're gonna take that sky piece and just add some a tape runner to that and we're gonna layer that onto our orange paper. And then we're also gonna take some foam squares and layer it onto the back of the carrots in that harvest crate. Now you'll see we're not gonna add the carrots on just yet, we're just gonna use them as a placeholder to decide exactly where our sentiment is going to go. And we're gonna be using a sentiment from the Carrot About You stamp set, and it's gonna say, I carrot believe it's spring, which is so, so super cute. So we're just gonna kind of play around, see how that's gonna fit best, and then we're gonna take out the Misty tool once we kind of see how things are gonna fit. And once we have that all lined up, we can close the door of the Misty and pick up that sentiment, then we can ink it up with some black licorice ink and then stamp that right onto the card. And I love the sentiment in that upper right hand corner. I think that's a really, really cute look. Then now that we've stamped the sentiment, we can finally put our crate of carrots onto the card. And I really love the pop that the foam adhesive gives to that crate full of carrots. And then my favorite part, we are gonna take that carrot car from Carrot About You and we're gonna add him into the scene. And I just think this combo of the die cuts and the stamp, it's just so cute. Like, look at that, he's driving away from the giant carrots. I just can't with how adorable this is. Then to add another little sentiment onto the card, we're gonna take out the stamp set, All the Speech Bubbles, which has all the speech bubbles. It has all these different sizes. And so we're gonna go ahead and ink up one of those speech bubbles. And then we are gonna be stamping a sentiment that actually comes from the all the speech bubbles set. You'll see there's a cute little one there that says sending smiles. And I just think that's adorable to have the bunny saying that. And I like that this makes it kind of a general spring card that you could send to anybody just to cheer up their day. It's just adorable. And so there you can see now he's saying the sending smiles and this is just so cute. Here we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. And so we're gonna layer this whole piece onto the card base. And then this year, I've been trying to decorate the inside of my cards more. And that's what we're gonna do with that little lettuce and carrot on the inside of this. So we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of these and we're gonna layer them in that bottom right hand corner, just kind of layered over each other. I think it looks so cute. And then this is a fun opportunity to use some other really cute sets. And we have the veggie happy add on that has all of these cute, little kind of vegetable puns in it. And so we're gonna stamp my favorite one, which is the lettuce celebrate right by the lettuce. And I think this is just so adorable and so sweet. And then we're gonna take a stamp that's actually from that All the Speech Bubbles set and it says, love you lots. And that looks really cute, I think, with the sentiments that we have at the front too. It's just adorable. So it's really fun to decorate the inside of your cards and I really love those little extra die cuts in there. It just makes it feel really, really special. And the little carrot car, the carrots, everything about this just makes me smile. It feels like spring. It makes me want to like go plant some flowers or some veggies. It's so cute and so much fun. And I love the idea of combining big die cuts and cute little stamped images. Next, we're gonna create a give it a whirl card using the stitched root veggies. And for this card, I'm gonna take that little radish here and we're gonna die cut that from some raspberry cardstock. Then I'm gonna die cut one of the greenery pieces there from some algae cardstock. And then for our cute little onion there, I'm gonna die cut that from some vanilla malt cardstock. And then for the greenery, we're also gonna be using some more of that algae cardstock. 
Then we're gonna use some of these smiley faces. So this is how I like to use them. I line them up on top, just kind of see how they're gonna look. And then I just layer them right onto my die cut once I know that I like how that smiley face is gonna be. And then I'm gonna hold that in place with some low tack tape. Then I'll do the same thing with the radish. I'll flip that die over since I think that little face is gonna look really cute on the radish. And then I'm just gonna add some low tack tape to hold that in place. And then we can run that through the die cut machine. And now we have our cute little smiley faces die cut from the radish and the onion. Now to add some color to the eyes for them, I'm just gonna take some black licorice cardstock and just trim down some little pieces there. You'll see I'm just eyeballing it and I'm just gonna kind of trim my little pieces down. Then I can flip my die cut over and add some tape runner to that and then layer my piece there. And I, at that point I saw that my piece was a little bit too big so I was just easily able to go in with my scissors and just trim it down some. And now I can layer that right on there and it looks so, so cute. I had a little bit of extra tape runner, so I'm just taking my adhesive remover and just removing any of the extra adhesive that I might have had coming through the eyes and the mouth of this guy. Then I'll repeat the same thing with the little onion. So I'm just gonna add some tape runner there on the back of him and then I can just layer that piece of black cardstock and just look how cute he is. Now it's time to add our greenery. And so for the onion, I'll just flip him over and add a little bit more adhesive. And then I'm gonna layer that cute little greenery coming out of him. And then for the radish, I'm just gonna use my pokey tool to kind of open up that little cut line that is there on the radish. I'll add some adhesive to the back of the radish and that piece of little greenery leafy top there. And then I'm just gonna tuck that right inside to that cut line. And it just looks absolutely adorable. Now that I have my little guys all die cut, I am gonna be bringing out my Give It A Whirl and we're gonna be starting to design the Give It A Whirl. And if you've never made a Give It A Whirl before, make sure to check out the intro video. I will link it in the description below. Next, I'm gonna bring out my Give It A Whirl template, which shows you the area that you need to design in to make sure that your scene is kind of a surprise as the wheel spins. And you'll see what I mean in just a little bit. And so there I can see that my veggies are looking really cute, but I thought they might need a ground. And so this is the Give It A Whirl scalloped add-on, and it has this nice little simple hillside. And so I went ahead and die cut that from some paper bag cardstock, and that's gonna be the ground for the veggies. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some adhesive to the back of that piece, and then layer that onto my blue gingham paper. Then I'll bring back that template so that I know exactly what area I need to design in. So I'm gonna line that up right there with the bottom of that hill, and then I'll just hold it in place with some low tack tape there. And then I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back of my veggies. And I'm making sure to cover the whole backs of these veggies so that they're nice and flat so that my wheel is gonna be able to spin above them. So I'm just adding a bunch of adhesive to them. And then you'll see now that I have my template there, I know exactly what area these little guys need to fit in. I'm gonna layer them together and then add them in to the dirt there. And I think this is just looking so cute. So then now I can press down and make sure they are nice and secure. And then we're ready to remove the template. Once we remove the template, it's time to line up our Give It A Whirl main base piece. And to do that, I really like using the interior part of the Give It A Whirl template. It really helps me line it up, especially because I'm not the best eyeballer. So I line it right there, right over my whole image. And now you can see I can line up my main base piece there with that even circle all the way around. I'm also putting my cut line at a 12 o'clock position. You can put that cut line at any position that you would like, and I've never done a 12 o'clock one before, so I thought it would be really fun to try that for this card. So once I have that lined up and held down with some washi tape, I'm going to move my template out of the way, then run it through the die cut machine, and now you'll see that I have a base piece with that cut line ready to go. Next, I'm gonna work on the base for this mechanism. So I've die cut this awesome flower garden backdrop die. This is one of our newest dies and I love it so much. And I've die cut it out of some algae cardstock. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually trimming off some of the leaves. And this is a really cool way to get a different look out of this die is I'm just trimming off the ones towards the top so that I only have leaves at the bottom. I'm also gonna trim down a piece of rainbow ever after paper. I love this beautiful yellow to fit behind the backdrop. And then I'm gonna die cut the largest of the stitch rectangle frames from some speckled eggshell cardstock. And you'll see how that layers perfectly onto the flower garden backdrop. And that stitch rectangle frame actually layers over most of our backdrop so that you can always get a really, really cool look by changing up the color of the frame. So I'm adding some liquid glue all on the back of this flower garden backdrop, and I'm just gonna layer that right over top there. And I'm adding liquid glue because I wanna make sure everything is nice and flat so that my give it a whirl mechanism can work really well. 
Now I'm gonna layer that frame over top and you'll see how it just changes the whole thing. I just love that the backdrops work with that stitch rectangle frame. And I think it's so cool to have this kind of garden growing at the bottom that's gonna go along all with our veggie theme. Now here you can see I have our veggie happy stamp set which has lots of cute veggie puns which is perfect for these awesome stitched root veggies. And I'm just gonna be cutting apart my stamp. And you can do that with these stamps because you can cut them apart and then you can stick them right back together. And so in this case, I'm gonna cut them apart so that I can have I love you so. And I have cut out the word veggie because I wanted the word veggie to stand out a little bit more. And to make it stand out, I'm gonna be using the Smitty's ABC stamp set. And this is an oldie but a goodie. You can see mine is very well loved. And it's so awesome because you can create custom phrases or personalize things to people's names. But in this case, I'm gonna be writing the word veggie so that it's in a different and larger font than everything else that I'm stamping. And I just think it's gonna be a really cool look. All of our alphabet stamp sets are created on these rectangular bases so that you can just line the pieces right up next to each other just like I've done here. And you can see that this one's supposed to look like an old typewriter font, so all of the letters are kind of up and down. It's such a cool look. And so we're gonna line that right under the I love you so veggie. And then we're gonna take the word much that we also cut apart from our sentiments from veggie happy, and we're gonna layer that below to create this really cute custom look for our sentiment. Here I have some more of that speckled eggshell cardstock that we cut the frame from. And I'm gonna stamp the I love you so veggie much in some really pretty freshly cut grass green ink. Then I'm gonna do a really fun offset technique with my ink. So I'm gonna clean up everything with my stamp chamois here. And I'm actually gonna remove the word veggie that we added with the Smitty's ABCs. Then I'm going to be inking up the I love you so and much with some dough ink. And I'm gonna stamp it right over top, just a little bit offset to create like a cool green shadow. So here you can see, it looks really, really neat. I love this. I used to do this all the time and I haven't done it in years. And I just think it's such a cool look. Look at that, isn't that so fun? It's a fun way to kind of play around with your different colors of ink. Now here is my moving piece for my Give It A Whirl, and I'm going to line it up so that my sentiment is centered, and that cut line is at 12 o'clock to match the one that we created earlier. Then I'm just going to hold it in place with some low-tack tape, and we're going to run that through the die-cut machine. And this is going to be the moving part of our Give It A Whirl. It's going to say, I love you so veggie much, and then it's going to reveal the veggies underneath. So now we're gonna start collecting all the pieces we need to make our give it a whirl mechanism. So we have our main base piece with the die cut veggies that we did earlier. And then we have our moving piece that says, I love you so veggie much. We have to die cut one more moving piece that I've just die cut out of some plain white cardstock. Then we're gonna die cut the decorative tab out of the algae cardstock that we used for that beautiful flower garden backdrop. And then we're also gonna die cut this little connector piece and we're die cutting that out of some copy or printer paper. So some nice lightweight paper. And then we're gonna be die cutting our tab here and we're gonna die cut that from some hundred pound cardstock and we're gonna be using that same speckled eggshell cardstock so that everything matches together really, really well. So for now, we're gonna put aside all of our pieces except for our main moving piece there that we decorated earlier and then also our connector piece. The connector piece has a score line right in the middle. We're gonna fold along that line and then just press down to crease it. Then we're gonna take our tape runner and we are gonna cover the whole thing of this. You can see I'm taking a lot of time to make sure the entire thing is covered and that's really, really important to do. Then we're gonna flip over our piece so that we're looking at the back and we're gonna line up that connector piece right there with that cut line, just kind of centered in between and right along the edge of the cut line. Then we can press down to secure it. And what I like to do is make sure that there's no extra tape runner everywhere. And you can see as I'm peeling this piece up, I can feel some extra tape runner. And you can just rub that away with your finger, just like that. And this is really important to do to make sure you don't have any extra adhesive there and make sure that your mechanism works really well. So you'll see I'm really taking my time to just rub away any of that extra adhesive. And I really added a lot of adhesive this time. So I really had to go in there and kind of make sure that everything was nice and clean. Then once I did that, I can take my other plain moving circle piece and then add some more tape runner completely covering the other side of that connector piece. And once again, you can see me going in with my finger to make sure there's no extra adhesive anywhere. And once I make sure that that's all good, we can go ahead and line up these two pieces. They're die cut with the same die, so they're gonna really easily line up. So I'm just gonna take this one and just stack it right up. I'll make sure that those cut lines line up 
And then once I do that, I can press down and secure it so that it attaches to that connector piece. Once that is nice and attached, I always like to take my bone folder and just press down to make sure that that connector piece has really connected these two circles together well. Then we can flip it over and we're gonna start adding our tab. And the tab's gonna go right behind that piece on the right there, right behind the piece that we decorated. So I'm gonna add some adhesive just along the right-hand side of that tab. And then that's gonna go right there, layered right behind. You'll see it has a curved edge, so it's gonna perfectly line up with the curve of that moving circle piece. Then we can go ahead and take our decorative tab and add some adhesive onto that and then layer that on there. And what I like about this is it gives more stability to the tab and it has that cute little arrow that tells the recipient what to do. Once we have all of that in place, we can start to create our give it a whirl mechanism. So to do that, we're gonna take both of our pieces and we are gonna flip them over. So we're gonna look at the back of both of them, just like that. Then we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna make sure we hold on to that tab there and we are gonna feed that tab right through the cut line on the main base piece, just like that. Once I've added it through just a little bit, I flip it over to the front and I'm gonna use my fingers to guide it. And you can see that I'm guiding the circle. We are training the paper what to do here. So you're gonna to wanna to move nice and slow and really guide that with your fingers. And you can see that it's really kind of getting stuck a little bit, that's okay. We're training the paper what to do. And once you do this, once it's gonna work. So now we're gonna go back in the other direction. You'll see I'm just kind of moving it again. And you can see already there, it's starting to move a lot better. Once you move it all the way back so that you're seeing the front of your moving piece there again, we can now start to work on adding our adhesive. So we're gonna take this whole piece here and we're gonna flip it over so that we're looking at the back. I'm gonna take some of these 3D foam strips. These foam strips are the best for creating give it a whirls. And we're gonna line it up so that the top of the foam strip lines up with that stitching line. So you'll see I'm just kind of curving that foam strip all of the way around. And it takes about two and a half foam strips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line that up. Once again, the top of the foam strip is lining up with that stitch line. Then we'll take one last half piece and that's gonna connect our whole circle all of the way around our moving piece. Once we've added all of our foam, we can start to remove the liner paper on these foam pieces. Once I have all of the liner paper removed, what I like to do is I like to make sure that my foam isn't too close to my moving circle. And if it is, I just take my finger and I just push it over just a little bit. So I always like to check and see, ah, oh, that's a little too close. Okay, I'm just gonna move it with my finger just a little bit. And the foam's pretty pliable, so it lets you do that. The next step is to add the mechanism to the base that we created earlier. So I'm just gonna center that so that it's nicely framed by all of that greenery below. And then once we have it in perfect placement, we can go ahead and press it down and that's gonna secure the mechanism in place. Now I wanted to show you another tip and trick that you can use for the Give It A Whirl. You don't have to do this, but it really kind of helps the Give It A Whirl move. And here I am using one of those powder tools. The baby powder works awesome for getting your interactive cards to move really well. And you'll know this is a tip and trick that we give for a lot of our interactive cards. And you'll see that I'm slowly spinning the wheel and then just rubbing the powder tool right along that cut line. And that's gonna help it move really, really smoothly. The last step that we need to do is add this whole thing onto a card base. So here I have a standard size card base, a five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some adhesive to that and then we can layer this whole thing on top. And now our card is all done. I love this Give It A Whirl so much. It is so much fun. I love the sentiment on the front and then the surprise of the characters on the inside. I think it's just absolutely adorable. I think it's such a fun way to create these where you have the sentiment first and then the surprise of whatever image that you'd like to put inside. And I also love that these die cut veggies are the perfect thing for the Give It A Whirl. I mean, this is just the cutest thing. And I also just love the frame of the flower garden backdrop at the bottom too. It really feels like the most gorgeous garden and speaking of an awesome garden full of veggies, Shari has an amazing card for you. So take it away, Shari. I'm creating a birthday card with the stitched garden veggies and I've cut all of my veggies out of some colored cardstock and I'll be doing a little bit of inking to these for some shading. So I'll start out with my pepper. This is cut from some sunflower cardstock and I'm just adding a little bit of the number two pencil ink to the bottom for some shading. I am using the grip mat from my Altenew stamp wheel platform to hold my die cuts in place while I add some inking. 
I am adding my stem to this, but you will see that I will not add all of the stems because I realized that I still need to cut the little faces in these. Now for my tomato, I've cut this from some guava cardstock and I'm adding a little bit of raspberry ink. For the cauliflower, I've cut this from speckled eggshell cardstock and I'm just adding a little bit of sugar cookie ink just to the edges. And then for all the greenery, I have some clover ink here for this darker green. This is cut from algae cardstock. And then for this really dark green, which is noble fur cardstock, I'm using noble fur ink. And this will be for my cauliflower. Now before I assemble my veggies, I do want to cut the little faces out of them. And there are three little faces in this die set. So you can see I've already cut all my little faces out and I can start to assemble. My lettuce here is cut from cilantro cardstock and the piece layered on front is from algae cardstock. For my tomato, I cut the topper here out of algae cardstock as well, and I did not add any inking to this die cut piece. Now I can add the leaves at the bottom of my cauliflower. And then of course I've already added the little stem to my pepper. To Fill in their faces. I just have a piece of storm cloud cardstock that I've just cut into some rectangles and I will flip them all over, add some glue around their faces and then layer this square piece of storm cloud on the back side. And now I can just flip them over and they all have cute little faces filled in. I will be using images from Veggie Happy all the speech bubbles, and I've also pulled out all the party hats to create a birthday card with these cute veggies. You can see I already colored and cut out my images with the coordinating dies. I'm also pulling some pattern paper from the Rainbow Ever After. I like this white with the little dots. I think it looks like confetti, and since this is a birthday card, I like the idea of creating a party with this frame. I'm using my four square backdrop landscape die to cut out a frame out of that pattern paper, and I'm also adding some spiffy speckles paper to my card base that we will see through all of these little openings in this frame. I have some liquid glue on the back of this frame and then I will just layer this right on top of that spiffy speckles paper. So now we have all these little openings to put our veggies in. I did want to add some ground to each of these little openings, so I will cut two of these rectangles. And you can see I'm trimming them down with my paper trimmer, and this is how I started out. I just need two rectangles because I can trim both sides and get that stitching detail. And I'm doing this for all four, and I started out with different height cuts so that my ground was not exactly the same in all these openings. But you're going to see that I will grab my scissors here and I'm actually going to cut the top of each of these to make it a little more organic like the ground. And I actually like that using my scissors makes them a bit more imperfect. You can see that I made it higher on the right side for the tomato. I don't want all of these panels to be exactly the same. You're probably not going to see this top curve too much, but it does give some ground for those veggies. To make them match the die cuts that I already have, I am adding a little bit of shading just to the top of those little hills using some dough ink, and this will make all of my die cuts match. I will add each of these little hills to those frames with some liquid glue. And since they are cut with the same die, they fit into those frames perfectly. I did decide it did need a little bit of texture. It was a little too plain for dirt. So I am taking my Copic markers and I'm taking two darker shades of brown and just adding some little dots to this craft piece. For my sentiment, I'm using the sentiment wishing you a veggie happy birthday from the veggie happy stamp set. And I've stamped this on some tied pool cardstock. I really love this new blue color. I've used a sentiment banner to cut it out. And then I've just added some foam squares to the back and I will line this up through that center part of the frame. Now I can start to add my veggies to my scenes and I'm using some thin foam squares to add these to each of these frames. 
I am using the thin foam squares on the veggies so that I can use regular thickness foam squares with my stamped images and get some different dimensions. But you could always just glue the veggies directly to the background and then add your mice with the foam. So for this little mouse here, I'm using some thicker foam squares. I am going to go ahead and put my lettuce down. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted this in the frame and I decided to kind of shift it over to the left so I have room for this little mouse on the right side. And when they overlap the veggies like her head there, I did use a thin foam square for that. I'm adding that little spade down there so she looks like she's working. And then of course, since this is a birthday card, this is where all the little party hats come in. So each of these little veggies has their own party hat, which I think is really fun. And I'm using those same thin foam squares to add the party hats to the veggies. This little mouse is going to go right in the center here, kind of crossing over between these two framed openings. And then to fill in right here, that is where this little plant is going to come in. I need to go ahead and add my other party hats to my other veggies. So I have this little one for my tomato. I love the top of the tomato. I think it looks like messy hair on like a teenager, which I think is fun. And then for this little party hat, I was trying to figure out where to put it because it kind of overlaps my banner a little bit. So I made sure that the top was between the words happy and birthday. And then of course I have this cute little worm, which I think is adorable on top of that sentiment banner. And then I'm using the All the Speech Bubbles and a sentiment from All the Speech Bubbles as well as the Veggie Happy add-on that says let us celebrate and I'm adding that to the lettuce which I think is hilarious. And then of course my little cauliflower up here says ready to party. There's also some small stamps in this add-on set that says hooray and woot and I thought those would be fun to kind of fill in and stamp in the other frames. And then of course we need a little bit of glitter on these party hats. So I'm just adding some glitter accents with some stickles. And here is my finished veggie happy birthday card. And I just think it's so much fun. You can take something like those vegetables and just add some party hats and make a really cute card. Oh my goodness, Shari, I love this card so much. The party hats and the cute veggie happy mice just make it so perfect. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this one by Grace just blew me away. She used our tote bag die and just used the front of the tote bag to layer it onto her card and fill it with the cutest and sweetest veggies ever. I also love that this card is a gift card holder, which is just so adorable. And I can't wait to make one just like it. This card by Tammy is so sweet and she shows us that this is perfect for Easter. I love the little bunnies and how she's added them in to that Easter basket. It's just adorable. This card by Audrey blew me away. I love the inking that she did. It's just stunning and I love that she layered some tools from the watering can in there. This card by Elena is so sweet and she shows us how you can just use one of the veggies in a card which looks awesome with the different smiley faces. Megan filled the fruit basket die with these adorable tomatoes and she created a pull and pop card and as you pull that tab you get the best surprise of the cutest sentiment. I love you from my head to my toe. So cute and so sweet. I love this card by Leticia and how she layered all of the carrots in the background almost to create her own pattern paper. I think it's such a cool look. And then here I love how Elise featured all of the veggies in these cute little four squares. They are just adorable smiling right at us. And then I love how the veggies are so great for the harvest crate. And here you can see how you can layer a lot of the different veggies right inside. And then this card by Maureen is the one that inspired us to make ours today. I think it is so cute with that die cut bunny. These little veggies are so much fun with the veggie happy add on sentiments. And here you can see how adorable they go together. And then I love that you can mix and match them with the veggie happy mice too. It is so cute and sweet. So we cannot wait to see all of your stitch garden and stitch root veggie cards. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.